Well, hello everybody. Welcome to this lovely day in the uh, North Pennines. The sun's shining for a change after all the rain we've been in the last few days. And what we're going to do today, I've no idea. Um, what we're going to do is start our journey of the little golden book alteration, Christmas edition. Uh, this is the book we've chosen to use, The Little Christmas Elf. As you know, Little Golden Books originated in, uh, in America in 1942, when they cost 25 cents. Uh, this is the one we're going to be altering. You can choose any one you like. It doesn't even have to be a Christmas one. If you don't want, you could just follow along and do a normal one. Uh, we'll just have a quick recap of the ones we did previously. Uh, this is the last one that we did. The very best home for me. Uh, we took, kept the pages in the same order so that you can read the story. And we added additional pages with tags and journaling cards. Uh, and then we did the spine. So what we're going to do today is to actually take apart the book, take the pages out and alter the pages to make them the right size to fit the new style of book that it's going to be rather than what it is now. Uh, all these measurements are going to be based on my book which measures currently six and a half inches wide and just under eight inches tall. Most of the little golden books will be of a similar size, um, but I did find one the other day at a car boot, uh, which is an older style one, um, which uh, somebody had signed their name, say, in November 1965. So what's that, 55, 55 years ago? Um, but what I did notice with that one is it is slightly shorter uh, by, what, maybe quarter of an inch just over maybe uh, so there are different sizes out there uh, this is an old one of course there's no barcode there's no ISBN number uh, whereas this is a more modern one you can see it's got the barcode and an ISBN number uh, the last one that we did was also a relatively old one and that was the same size as that one so Please be aware, measure your book and my measurements or the measurements Miss P will be using later in the series will be based on that one and yours may be slightly smaller. It may not be. Right, so the first thing we need to do is to look at the construction of these little golden books. Uh, it is made up of, or this one is anyway, two hard card covers uh, and a number of pages on the inside. The way that they make them is they've got the two pieces of card with a flexible hinge on the front and the back uh, and then it's stapled through and then they cover it with the, the tape, the golden tape that gives the books the name. Um, where it hinges, you can probably just about see that it sort of scalloped in on the outside because it's made for folding that way. But it's also scalloped on the inside so that it can flex both ways, uh, which we will be utilizing that feature later when we do make the spine because at the moment those pages fold out that way but when we've got a new spine in it'll be folding a different way uh, right so the very very first thing we're going to do is remove my glasses so i can see properly the very first thing we're going to do is to number the pages uh, if we were to dismantle that and you end up with a load of separate pages and you can't remember which order the story goes in, if you're not familiar with the story, then they can get awfully mixed up and you can spend a lot of time trying to reassemble the story in the correct order. 
So if we number the pages before we take it apart, at least we know that when we put it back together, they'll all be in the right order. Um, because with our book, we want to retain the story. Even though we've turned it into a journal and added extra pages, we still want the ability to read the story from the start to the finish. Uh, there are some people that alter little golden books and they just use the pages and, and they're not particularly bothered that they're in the right order or the right place. Um, but I think the way we would like to do it is to keep the story intact because it's been that way, particularly some of the older books since 1942. Why would you want to mix up the story? It doesn't make any sense to me. Right, so the first thing we do is get a pencil. I'm going to go, go through and we're going to number the pages, uh, starting at number one, obviously, and we're going to do it somewhere probably on the left hand side. If we do it on the, uh, the right hand side, if we do it on the bottom left, for instance, some of that we're going to be removing later on and you'll lose the number. So I'd do it on the bottom right or the top right or in the middle on the right, but basically on the right is what I'm trying to say. So that's number one. And that's left of that one, obviously. Three. Doing this in pencil so we can rub them out after when we've finished. But at least we will make sure that when we put all this back together again. Oh, I've got to go up to them. Five, six, seven. So basically the recto pages we're doing on the right and the verso pages we're doing on the left. Or the front and back, if you're not so fancy. <laughs> 13, bear with me, I won't be too long. At least we're going to know how many pages we've got to work with. 14, 15, 16. 17, 18, 19, 20. Maybe we missed that 21. It's amazing what doing lives does to your brain. 24. I think that's probably a similar number as you did in the last one, wasn't it? There we go. So that's those numbered up. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try something that I've never done before. Dodgy, I know, especially on a live. Uh, last time we did a book, I think it was Leslie. So as you've seen a video where some people had applied some heat to the tape on the spine and by applying heat, it made the glue go tacky again uh, and you could peel off the tape. Uh, I'm not going to remove all of the tape, but where there are two staples, I don't know whether you can see that on camera, but there's a staple there and there's a staple there. And that's all that's holding the two books together. What we're going to do is cut either side of the staples, apply some heat to the tape and hopefully peel the tape off the staples so that when I remove them, we can put the tape back to where it was. It's more of an experiment than anything because we're probably going to have to make this a bigger spine uh, when we've added the extra pages. So we're probably going to have to put a new cover on the spine anyway. But it's going to be interesting to see, I think. So first of all, I'm going to get a scalpel or a sharp knife or an exacto knife or whatever you got to hand. And I'm just going to go down. If you push down on the tape, you can see the staple. It's from there to there. It starts to come through. You can feel it. So if you cut just to the left and right of that, all the way down to the bottom. And where's the other one gone? There it is. There's a wet. It's well hidden, that one. There it is. Top and bottom of that one. Ooh, I can feel the staple under there. And the same again on the back. This one seems to have been stapled not exactly evenly. There's one staple there, which is quite close to the bottom. 
and the other staples there, which is much further away from the top. Whether they're all like that, I don't know. But you, you can, if you push down on the tape, you can feel where it is and just cut to either side of it. Some of the older books, I suspect that applying heat to it won't assist you because I imagine the glue is gone. It's probably a totally different glue they use these days anyway. Um, but the tape also goes very brittle. So it might not be easy to do. Let me get the heat gun and we'll see what, what happens. Play a bit of heat. Warm the finger up. Let's see if we can peel that up now. See if that comes up any easier. Yeah, I think it might be coming up a bit easier. There we go. Look, that's coming up. There we go. Now you can see that that's exposed the staple, the back of the staple. And if I was to try to do that on that one. Yeah, that's actually also coming up. That's not so stuck, but not as easily as having applied a little bit of heat. So we'll just apply a little bit of heat, soften the glue. Not too much, we don't want to melt the thing. Yeah, see that's coming up much easier. I'm going to apply a little bit of heat. Again, you can see that that's exposed the two, where are we, the, the two parts of the little staple. We'll do the same on the, what is the front? A bit of heat. No such as steam turns over a teapot. Works great, she takes the whole tape off. Yeah, well, obviously, if you if you want to do that, um, you, you, who was it said? Sorry, uh, flow. Flow. If you, if you want to steam it, like you're steaming home, open somebody's mail, <laughs> then uh, then obviously you can do that. And if it was to heat the whole of this, you could take it off. And if you are going to recover the spine in something else, you could actually use that tape somewhere within the design of the book. So you would retain all its its original parts, even if not in the original place. You probably can't see it on camera, but you can actually see that it changes colour slightly once the uh, the glue melts. There we go. Now you can see there's the staple there and the staple there. So once we've removed them, we should be able to put those back, perhaps apply a little bit of glue, and it looked like nobody's ever been in there. So the first thing then we need to do is, uh, as you know, staples are sort of a that shape. Can you see that? That shape. <laughs> and we need to, these two ends get folded over. We need to unfold those. Uh, so we could use a number of tools. You could use a small little flat-ended screwdriver which would probably get under them. There we go, just get under, lever it upwards so it's nice and vertical. You can see that now, that little staple is sticking up. It might not be the easiest thing to see, but it's sticking upwards. We could do the same with the other side of it. You could probably use something like a pocket knife on this. As well, you could use what I like to use, which is a multi-tool. This particular one is a Gerber one. I have a particular fetish for multi-tools. I think it's the boy in me. The Boy Scout always like to be prepared. It's what Miss P likes to call my manly tool. <laughs> She'll often be heard saying, can I borrow your manly tool? To which I say, it's always ready for you, my dear. So that slides in and out like that. It makes a pair of pliers. And in here is a number of blades. That one's a particular bottle opener. Uh, but it also makes a very nice lever because it's got quite a sharp point on it. And that's also a nice way of getting those up. You can get under them quite easily. There we go. And then once we've done with that, 
we can it's got a safety lock on it <laughs> get me manly tool in the right place we can use the ply rivets just to straighten them up because the straighter you can get them before we try to remove them from the book the better are you actually expecting these ladies to go out and buy a manly tool uh, they could certainly go to a to a, a tool store or an hardware store and, and ask for a manly tool if they want. I, I'm not sure what response they would get. Uh, I would also advise against Googling manly tool. There's some things you cannot unsee. But if you wish to go and go, do a, a multi-tool and put in the word Gerber, G-E-R-B-E-R, -E or Leatherman, I know, Leatherman, Leatherman manly tool. Don't Google it. Don't. Then uh, they should find some in of a of an ilk. Oh, Jazz has got two of those manly tools. Well, that's that's marvellous. I know. And Lynn says a woman probably invented that tool. I I wouldn't be surprised because it's got a bottle opener and a corkscrew on it, so it wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, right, having straightened those, I've made them as perpendicular out of the book as I possibly can because it just makes them easier for coming out the other side. Now I find the best way to do this is to just get something like one of Miss P's rulers. Just put the book on top just so that there's a bit of a gap. All I'm doing is raising the spine off the table just by that little bit. Just put it over the end and then get your manly tool or your pair of pliers and just give them a little tap. And hopefully by giving them a little tap, they should emerge from the other side just by a bit and become a set of goal posts. It just assists in get, then getting your screwdriver underneath and, and just levering them up. Uh, the best one for this is probably a nice large screwdriver. There we go, that's just come straight out. And there we go, there's a nice little relatively straight staple. And don't worry, I'm not gonna reuse it. I know you're thinking I'm probably gonna be you reusing that, knowing how uh, parsimonious I can be, but I'm not. Even me, that's a step too far, even for me. Uh, we don't restaple the book, so we've no need for those, so I'll put them safely in the bin before somebody sticks the finger. Uh, and then, obviously, because we've slit that with a scalpel and peeled off the glue, we could re-stick that down, which we shall do at a later date. And then it looks like nobody's even been in it. Right, now, having done that, if you open up the book, you should find that the pages or the two signatures. Obviously, for anybody new that's watching, the signature is just a group of pages that are put together and a number of signatures make up a book. And there we have, that is the little golden book opened up nicely. That's how it was originally. And that's how it's gonna be. And what we're gonna do what we did with the others is we pushed in that back, strengthened it up and made that shape of book. Uh, because this one, we're going to perhaps have some more slightly fancier folds and tucks and corner spots and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, it's probably going to grow too thick to actually fit in without splitting that spine and reinforcing it. But we're going to cover that at the later date. So all you really need to do at this point is to put that to one side. Now what you'll notice is these, of course, these pages went from that side of the book all the way through to the back end of the spine. If we are going to straighten that off at the back, which is what we are going to do, of course you lose that extra distance. So now these pages, if you were to leave them at the same side, are going to stick out too far. They're outside the book. So what we need to do next 
is to think about shortening these pages to fit within our new format of book. I'll just put that to one side because we've effectively finished with that really now till probably the very last episode. These again, as we'll measure them, I think we'll find that they are what we said, which was about six and a half by eight. You can see the holes where the staples used to be. If we open them up, we've got them all numbered. Sometimes those signatures stick, like it looks like it's only one. Yeah. Yep, yeah, Miss P's quite right there. With these, uh, these, as I say, these two signatures, they seem to have three pages in each. Uh, three pages is uh, six sides, <laughs> and each side, each each side contains two pages. So we've got six times two times two gives us this twenty-four pages that we numbered up in the first instance. Oh, maths is a struggle today. Um, sometimes when you actually check the book, particularly the older ones, you may find that the bit where the, the signatures is sticks to the tape in the book. So you may have to pull them to get them away from the tape in the book, particularly on the older ones. Uh, and then when you pull them away, you may find they're both stuck together and you think mine isn't the same because it's only one signature. But actually it it is two, they're just stuck together. So if you counted along the six pages, six sides, uh, and then open it up, you'll find that you can actually prise them apart. They'll just be glued very slightly, just where they join together. So you should be able to separate them out and end up with the two signatures. So what we need to do is we need to reduce this down so it's going to fit the new size. If we were to measure that, we'd find that the actual fold on the current cover oops let's find the right measurement there it comes to six inches so it's about half an inch of spine that we're going to be losing but just to be on the safe side we're going to make it five eighths so what we need to do is to reduce the size of this by five eighths now you may be tempted just to trim up that side but you in danger then of perhaps losing some of the images or perhaps even some of the words if you were really gung-ho. Uh, so what we're going to do is actually take the five-eighths off this side. Uh, a lot of that tends to have nothing on it because obviously, as you can see there, that's the holes of the staples. I don't know whether you can see that or not. That's the holes in the staples, so that's never seen the light of day since the book was constructed. So to lose that isn't really a big issue. Uh, so we'll start with the first page. What we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to score along this side at five-eighths of an inch. I'm going to be using to score a line is uh, this scoring tool. Uh, most of you that have seen these lines before will be familiar. It's like a rotary cutter blade, except it's blunt. Uh, and I'm just going to score a line along there to make it easier to fold. Uh, do we score both sides? I guess we do. Probably make it easier. Let's give them the right place. Score, score, score away. And then what we're going to do is now you can 
see that the we've scored some lines you can perhaps pick that up on the camera we're going to fold that over uh, that way i think so. stop being a klutz i'm going to fold that over on its on the scored line and use a bone folder just to press that in and the same on the other fold it over the scored line is anybody saying anything my dear uh, yeah i think we're discussing how many signatures they've had in their books some have one at least have one that had one only one in it uh jean had a book that when she took it apart they said number one and number two on them for the signatures yeah. so they were done with we've, we've pressed in our scored lines five eighths of an inch both sides of the center uh, and then what we're going to do is to glue together that extra bit that we're going to do away with but we don't want to do away with all of it so the first thing we're going to do is put a bead of glue down the center this is just aileen's tacky glue obviously any glue that you have to hand would be sufficient don't do it don't need a lot it's, it's not really doing any structural work we'll just do down both sides squirt a bit in the middle pop the top back on i'll get shouted at and fold that over that's right isn't it oh, no. fold the bright bit there we go fold that back because i've now got a bit of glue on there where's your dry wet wipe get rid of that making a pig's ear there we go just press that down there we do so what we've done is then we've created a extra bit and we want to keep these two pages now what we're going to do is we've folded that basically at five eighths of an inch and we're now going to chop off three eighths of an inch from the side the bit that we don't want so get three eighths of an inch which is there get me get me right-handed rotary cutter as opposed to the left-handed and just trim that off basically just uh, leaving a quarter of an inch uh yes yes two eighths quarter of an inch left on there uh so now we'll have effectively reduced the size of that page to the size that the new cover of the book is we're going to make um so the next thing we need to do is, is to get rid of that that quarter of an inch uh and this is where we need to decide which way that we're going to go obviously you can see on the inside now that's that's fine we've lost none of the image none of the words and it's looking grand it can still be sewn into the signature yep that now because the two parts are glued so when we come to sew in the signature we've got some paper to work with but we do need to get rid of this like flappy bit left we just need to decide which way we're going to go we could come that way um but we're starting to get a bit of the image come over the front or we could fold it the other way and basically we'd be putting a white line on that side which i think probably looks slightly better with the white line down there than it does having some of the image on the white so what we'll do then is glue that down onto that side 
and then we'll have a new page of the right size that's been strengthened up ready to be sewn so in. This one's in signatures you can't really see that center bit. No you can't no once once they're sewn in and you've got multiple pages in line when you actually get down into the inside bit you can't really see what's going on anyway. Uh, so we just fold that over and press it with a bone folder. Or you could use the brayer because as we know all glues work best with a bit of pressure. There we go, I think we just need a little bit more under there. I think I've been a bit mean with my glue. There we go. So that's our first page reduced in size to fit what will eventually be our new size cover. Uh, too much talking after you put your glue on. Too much talking, I know. Should I do another one or do you think that's... Uh, I'll do one more. I'll do one more, a bit quicker, less talking. Put the lid on the glue. Because it's a relatively easy, put the glue, the glue lid on the glue. Uh, it's a relatively simple process, but it just does need a little bit of explaining. So all we've done really is if you get one of the next pages that we're going to do... Uh, which will be that one, not that it really matters. Uh, you'll see that that now is, is shorter than that one. And all we're doing is re removing excess that we don't need, but we're doing it on the inside rather than the outside. That's all we're doing, even though I've made it sound much more complicated than it actually is. So, first thing, score the five eighths of an inch so we can fold it and get a nice neat fold uh, five eighths obviously some of you won't have a uh, proper rotary scorer uh, some of you may have uh, scoring boards uh, which again are marked off in eighths of an inch find five eighths put your paper on it at five eighths, score it down, achieve the same thing. If you don't have a scoring board or a rotary scorer, then I would recommend something like a butter knife. It's quite a thick knife, it's nice and solid, but it's quite blunt on the end. Again, you can score very nicely with one of those. In fact, we'll do that this time and throw caution to the wind. Five eighths. Score it. Oop. Help if I didn't move it while I'm doing it. It's much easier when you can get over the top rather than. Normally I'd stand up and be doing it over the top because you're doing it alive and you don't want to get your bald head on the camera too much. <laughs> then it makes it slightly more difficult to get the pressure down on it and just score it down you won't cut through the paper but you will give it a nice score line that makes it much easier to fold when you come to the folding part so you end up with a nice sharp crease edge do the other side score that Actually, it's quite a nice score line. That actually, it's, I find it's a lot easier than the rotary scorer. But unless you use a steak knife, unless you use a steak knife, in which case, I'd save that for the steak. <coughs> uh, speaking of steak, today we had a very nice surprise come in the post. Uh, as you know, Miss P uses a lot of uh, Fabri-Tac, and it normally comes in this four-ounce bottle which to be honest is about the smallest beef burger you'd want, about four ounces. Uh, but through the post came today with some nice large Fabri-Tac at eight fluid ounces, which is getting up more to a steak size. <laughs> and thank you, Hilda. It was Hilda that sent those. Nice large, as you can see, 
everybody knows I like a big bottle of glue. So I was made up this morning. Right, so we've scored those two sides. Miss P coughing in the background, I'm not sure why. Maybe it's just a normal cough rather than get on with it, cough. Put a bit of glue right down the center, down the edges, along one of the score lines. Bit in the Sorry, middle. Just bit in the middle. Apparently, no, she, just coughing. apparently she was just coughing. <laughs> but you can see how nervous it makes you when she just coughs. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> I think sometimes she just does it as a practice. She has a practice cough to see if I'm paying attention. Use the dried out wet wipe. Perfect for mopping up any excess glue. Give that a bit of a press with a bone folder. There we go. Now we've got that. See, nice and neat on the inside. Nice and neat, ready for sewing in. I've lost none of the image, none of the words. Now we need to do is to get rid of some of this excess on the edge. Bring back his ruler, three eighths of an inch. As I said before, all these measurements are based on uh, our book. They should be very, very similar on yours, I would imagine. I don't think they've changed the design much over the years. Help if I put it on three eighths, both ends, wouldn't it? Not the easiest ruler to read this one, actually. Three eights, three eights, come on, come on, man, get a grip. There we go. This time I shall pick up the left hand uh, cutter. It's all right. It always feels like it needs a new that blade in it. Side. That side's a poor side to read it from. The ruler. Mm. Oh, you mean the this this side? Yeah, you're right because there's yeah. it's smaller numbers on that side yeah. than this side. She, she's right, of course. Of course, she's right. Uh, but just quick point there, as you notice that because I'd done it that way, and I was coming in from this side, I picked up the left-handed one. Uh, there's a there's a good reason for that, as opposed to the right-handed one, mainly because I'm right-handed. I was doing it on the left hand. If you actually look from the top. You can see when the blade's extended, hopefully you can see, this plastic this side comes up much nearer the top of the blade. You see there's much less blade exposed than the other side because it's only got that plastic disc there. If I'm cutting on the that side, you're pushing the, the rulers this side and if you push against that, the blade can't deform. If you got the left hand one in the the rulers this side you'll see that that can bend because it's got no support and there's a spring washer this side that it's pushing against so it can actually move so if you're using your rotary cutter on your ruler and you find that it sometimes wanders off like that nice wander it may be because you're using the wrong side of the blade you need the side with the big black disc next to the ruler like that if you do it on the other side sorry you need that that side <laughs> next to the thing you need to be pushing that way so the nut needs to be on the ruler one it makes it easy to see and b it won't deform the blade if you put it the other way it makes it harder to see because you can't see past that black bit to the base but you can also bend the blade so it'll wander off. It'll tend to do that if you're using the wrong side on the wrong side. Does that make sense? Did that make sense to anybody? See, that's that's the right-handed one. That's the left-handed one. What I'm trying to say, basically, is if you have this side against... 
No, no, yes. <laughs> if you have that side against there, you can bend it. If you put it on that side, you can't. Try it on your own, you'll work it out, what I'm trying to say. Right, anyway, we've trimmed that down now. Now to need to get rid of that excess little bit that we've got extra little bit of flappage. So again, we need to decide which way we're going to go. Uh, we could go that way, but we're going to lose the cat's head. Or we could come the other way and retain the cat's face. So I think what we'll do is go that way this time. Because we lose less of the image and we don't want to chop the cat's face off. Except when he wakes me up at three o'clock in the morning. In which case I could gladly chop his face off. <laughs> I'm only joking. We've had shady what must be about 14 years now. Yeah. So kind of grew accustomed to him. Get me dry wet wipe, smooth that down, a little bit of bray in even, because it's always best to apply pressure when you've glued something. Uh, and there we go, that's the second one. See, it's fairly invisible that side, and we've still got the face of the cap that side. Now all you need to do is carry on and do that for all the pages. And you will be ready for the grand adventure to start. Right, Sammy says that you can use dry, you know, uh, tumble dryer sheets. Yeah. Because uh, they don't need lint either. Yep. And Helen Adams says her package has arrived and she's really excited. Excellent. That's uh, Helen Adams. She's received the uh, collaborative journal that we did. It arrived today. Uh, so she's going to have a jolly old time flipping through that later. Uh, and we use a dried out wet wipe, but apparently um, laundry, what they're called again? The laundry wipes. She's not listening. She's in time lag mode. The laundry sheets are also lint free and you can use them. Uh, and they're brilliant just for mopping up any loose bits of wet glue you've got around. Do we use the... Do we use the wet wipe first and then dry it out? I said, I don't fancy that much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I suppose it depends what you're using the wet wipe on, to be honest. It's it not, no, no. I just said I took two out every night and artistically draped them over something. She does. She artistically drapes wet wipes around the house to dry <laughs> out. <laughs> But yes, it's just basically something that's absorbent but lint-free. And wet wipes are relatively inexpensive and it's easier to dry them out and use them. Or laundry sheets, apparently. Which would also smell nice, but not if you used them for something else first. <laughs> it's not a good idea, no. Well, if there's any, unless there's any more questions, there's very little more I can add, really. I can uh, put my manly tool away in its sheath. And don't use them wet on printed paper, paper that you've printed on an inkjet, because it'll take the... Ink. Yes, yes, don't use wet wipes on printed papers, because it will fetch the ink off. So that's me manly tool put away. And I think there's little else I can uh, add to you today, really. Is there anything else you'd like to say, Miss P? Nothing. She says nothing. So that's great. So we shall be continuing with uh, The Little Christmas Elf. By then all the pages will be shortened to fit the new spine that we're going to create with the book. Uh, don't worry about that at the moment. That's probably the very last thing we'll do because we need to finish the journal before we know how big we need to make the spine. So we can put that to one side. Forget about it. Uh, I'll get on and, or Miss P will get on and shorten the rest of the pages. And we shall join you Saturday, 2 pm UK time. Um, and we'll have a jolly old time. So that's it, I think. Is there anything more you'd like to add, Miss P? No, thank you. No, so 
Bye for now. See you soon. Bye.